World Day about honor, respect, tribute. Honor, respect, and tribute is the purpose that we have on Memorial Day. In 1863 in Columbus, Mississippi, after decorating the graves of her two sons who had died, represented their beloved Southland, an elderly lady walked to two mounds of dirt at the corner of the cemetery to place memorial flowers there also. What are you doing? shouted some friends. Those are the graves of two Union soldiers. Softly, compassionately, the mother said, I know, I know. I also know that somewhere in the north, a mother or a young wife mourns for them as we do for ours. That loving deed got press coverage. And out of that, what we have today is known Memorial Day. We honor the war dead once a year, but their sacrifice is evident to each and every one of us every day of the year. Today we honor the memory of those who paid the ultimate price for their for our freedom and gave their lives on the altar that we know today. And we enjoy a lot of freedom in our country. I thought about that this week. You know, we have the freedom to attend church or not. <laughs> we are free to choose what we really want to do when we grow up. We are free to choose where we want to live. We are free to choose most of the things that affect each and every one of our daily lives. We are free to choose. But I read an article that I want to read to you. You've heard it before. It's published many years ago. It talks about the veteran. It says, it is the veteran, not the preacher, who gave us the freedom of religion. It is the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is a veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It is a veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us freedom to assemble. It is a veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is a veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It is a veteran who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag, who one day rests under the flag. Did you notice those last three refer to our flag? The flag this morning that I have to my right or left is the symbol of our nation. It is flown everywhere, everywhere in this world that freedom exists. Any place there is American consulate, any place there is American business, any place that Americans have any influence at all in any country in this world, this American flag flies above, uh, by that building or on top of it. It is only in those countries where freedom is not allowed <coughs> that the red, white, and blue is also not allowed. So this morning we have a heritage that we ought to be thankful for. Every battle that we have fought in this country since 1776, the red, white, and blue has flown. Yes, it has changed. It has uh, come under different styles, different configurations of the blue and the arrangement of the stars each time a country or a state has been added to our union, another star has been uh, in the field of blue, but it still is the American flag. And I don't know about you, I'm very proud. Very proud to display it. Very proud to have it flown at my house. Very proud of those individuals who wear a uniform, who have given their life. So Memorial Day is much more than parades and firecrackers and barbecues. It's a day which we should remember the individuals, men and women, who laid their lives down to give us and to maintain the freedom that we enjoy today. Yes, yes, we enjoy our freedom, but that freedom, as you've heard it said many times, was not free. It cost. Many of you here today that have fought and engaged in battle, you know, because you saw your comrades pay that ultimate price. Let me just read to you real quickly 
the list of those or the numbers of those who gave so much. In the Revolutionary War, 25,324 died for our freedom. In the Civil War, 498,332. World War I, 116,710. In World War II, 407, uh, 316,000. In the Korean War, 54,546. In the Vietnam War, 58,098. In the First Gulf War, 900, I'm sorry, 293. In the Iraq War, 819. In the Afghanistan War, in which that number still continues to go up, 2,372. Those thousands of sacrifices of those lives would not and should not be given in vain. Because of their sacrifice, we're free here today. And we have the right, the right of this country, to assemble as we have this morning. And thank God for that. For those who gave it all, because they believed that the outcome of what the conflict was was greater than who they was, they, as John 15, 13 says this, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. We're honored for those who fought for our freedom, giving their lives for us friends. I know that today is the day that we remember those who lost their lives in the fight for our freedom. But also, as we already have already done this morning, we have honored those that did fight and those that still fight today for our freedom. Our veterans and those who still serve were willing to pay the <coughs> ultimate sacrifice. So many of our military men and women are off. You know, I, I think about it because my son, you know, they, they leave their family, they leave their homes, they leave what is comfortable around about them, and they're sent to anywhere in the world. Most often, not their choice. They go because they were told to go. They served because they were willing to serve. Today on this Memorial Day, I don't want to diminish their sacrifice and their service of those men and women, but can I just for a moment, when we recognize those that gave such an awesome gift to each and every one of us, I want to recognize there was another great soldier who stepped on a harsh battlefield he entered the battle knowing that it would cost him everything. The soldier bravely entered the battlefield and he won a great victory for you and I. But it was at a price. This great soldier gave his life, not for a nation, not for a country, but for all humanity. His was not a life given in vain, but it was a sacrifice of his life that gave us the freedom, gave us the freedom of our sins. For the child of God, every day is a memorial day. And we need to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the greatest soldier of all who gave us. Let me read to you Hebrews chapter 12 out of the King James. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I know that's not a traditional Memorial Day verse, but I think that this verse tells us two reasons we need to focus on the true meaning of this special day of honoring. You see, this great cloud of witness, I spoke about it, has been too many weeks before, but they are there in the heavens, and they surround, the Bible tells us, that it compasses, there's a lot of people there uh, that, that share in what we're going through right now. You see, we live today because of what others gave and sacrificed for us. They pay a price for the freedom that we enjoy. 
Our past military generations began to lay down a foundation that we could build our freedom upon, upon those countries. I'm sure those individuals in the Revolutionary War didn't understand the full impact of what they were doing and what it would set up for this country. I'm sure the conflicts that they had in prior events, even World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the, these events, these battles took place on foreign lands to be able to establish that which we have today. Yet did every soldier truly understand what he was doing, the sacrifice that he was paying for? Probably not. But he believed in something greater than himself. He believed in the cause of freedom. And then in our time, in most of our day, we had young men and women that went to a country far, far away from us in a land where they didn't even hardly know what they were fighting for. And yet our military individuals in Korea, I mean in, in Vietnam, willing to go over there to pay an ultimate sacrifice. And then we've had three conflicts since then. One we're continuing in to this very day. Where our young men and women are called upon to put their lives on the line, stand at their point and guard this nation's freedom. You say, well, what does that have to do with us up here today? Well, I think John F. Kennedy made it quite clear that are we going to wait until this country is overtaken by those that would want to threaten our freedom. We must go where they are so that we will not wait till they are where we are. Now my Christian friend, as I look at the political spectrum of today, I have to admit to you there is fear in my heart because I'm afraid that there is a generation that is allowing the enemy to come into our very presence. Call it communism, call it socialism. It amazes me that individuals can so proudly stand up in a republic that we have in our country and proclaim that there's something other. Something other that men on Memorial Day died to protect our country from. We have fought the oppression of socialism and communism on foreign lands. Our boys and girls have died to keep it out of our country. And then there is a people today that stand up and say, hey, this is who I am. It's not who I am. And I know it's not who you are. So we have a cloud of witnesses. We have a cloud of witnesses here today. We just saw a PowerPoint presentation of our family, our moms, our dads, our uncles, our friends, who, like I said, have gone on to be with the Lord, many of them, who served in the military, did so for an idea. And that idea was freedom. So therefore, church, listen, we have a responsibility. We who remain have a responsibility to honor those who paid the price so that we could stand upon this freedom that we have here today. We're responsible to show our fallen soldiers and, and also, may I say, our fallen martyred Christians. This morning, we who are alive and remain are in an active battle for the hearts and lives of individuals. Those service people, those military individuals that we think about today were willing to give everything they had so that we can have what we have. And yet we live in a world today that seems not willing to want to pay the price for anything. We have martyrs in the church. Just last year, over 13,000, the news doesn't say this, but over the last year, 13,000 Christians all around the world were martyred because of their faith. In China, and this is all that we know, 
236 were executed. You know why? Because they committed murder? Because they stole? Because they raped? Because they did? No. You know why 236 lost their lives last year, 2018? Because they were caught with a Bible. You see, Christians are martyred every day. In church, we have a responsibility to honor them also. You see, they died so you could come to church. They died so you could carry a Bible. They died so you could come to vacation Bible school. And so church, it is a mystery. And I'm sure as that cloud of witnesses looks upon us from the heavenlies, they wonder too, is my sacrifice in vain? Oh, I'm sure many military individuals think that today. You mean I went and fought communism? I went and fought socialism? I went and fought imperialism and Nazism? I went and gave my life for my country? When there's people out there, individuals out there, will take this sacred red, white, and blue and set fire to it? We have individuals in this country will stand by or walk by while this takes place. Americans, where is our pride in our country? I'll guarantee you just 25, 30 years ago, every World War II veteran would probably have whooped you if they had seen you doing things like that. There's a lot of veterans here today that would probably do it also. If you tried to disgrace that flag this morning, I wouldn't try it. We're here today to honor the sacrifice. We're here to give ourselves a fresh and a new. There's a lot to be said about courage. I would like to give you a few quotes this morning that I found. Ambrose Redmond said, Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something else is more important than fear. Mark Twain stated, Courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not the absence of fear. Dan Rather wrote, Courage is being afraid, but going on anyhow. One that I like best is from John Wayne. He puts it this way, Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up and moving forward anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, courage is not something that we're born with, nor is it a skill that we can acquire through practice. But courage comes in knowing that there is something right and doing something about it. Courage comes in trusting in something or someone bigger than ourselves. For many people, that something is a cause or a dream. For those of us who follow Christ, courage can only come from one, that one, who has given us more than what we could ever give. Listen to me, saints. When we take refuge in God Almighty, no storm can overcome us. And even though death may attempt to overtake us, we can still live in peace and harmony and love because we live in God. You see, God promises us eternal life to those that accept Jesus Christ as the Lord. God tells us that in His Word that this present world will pass away. So therefore we know that there is a future, that there is an eternal life that awaits us. The Bible tells us that we're to fear no one that can kill our bodies, but rather fear the one who can destroy our souls. You know, I've said this before. If there was a terrorist or a gunman that would walk into this sanctuary right now, listen to me. If they threatened you with death, if they would say, listen, I want you to denounce your faith in Jesus Christ, or else I'm going to kill you right now. I want you to think about it. Because first of all, what is death? Death is only the way to get to heaven. 
Amen. Promotion. Amen. Promotion. It's graduation. Huh? What do we have a Christian if you really believe that Jesus Christ said that I'm going to prepare a place for you, that where I am there you shall may be also. If you really believe that, then what do we have the fear of death? I love this congregation. You know, some terrorists come in here with a, a, a big old gun and everybody, he threatened us with death. Every, every church uh, member would stand up and say, I hope you have enough ammunition because I'm not afraid. Bring it on. Huh? Come on. Do, do what you can. You, I hope you have enough bullets because I'm going home to be with Jesus. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Let's remember those who have given their ultimate price. I, I call us to three actions. I challenge us this week to do these three things. Number one, think. Think and pray. The first one is think. Remember those who have served our armed forces and that gave their lives to preserve our freedom and our liberty. Remember those who have served our communities. I'm talking about our first responders who also to this very day put on a uniform and a badge. And they run toward danger. They run into burning buildings. They run into a cry for help, not knowing what awaits them. Thank. Well, we can't thank. We can honor those that have gone before us. But seek out a veteran. Sometimes they're not hard to recognize. Many of them will have a hat on that shows the branch of service that they served. And, and I, I just want to say, uh, take a moment and come up to them and say, thank you for your service. That's all you have to say. Or if you see them sitting at a restaurant, buy them a cup of coffee. Or if you're really thankful for your freedom, tell the waitress, I want to pay for their meal. <laughs> but think of veteran. Think of firefighter. Thank a first responder, a police officer. And then finally pray. Keep those who are presently serving in your prayers. That they can be found faithful in the cause that is laid before them. Pray for those that are away from their families. Those of you that served know what I'm talking about. Sacrifice. Dedication. Tribute. We give those to you today, to those that have fallen before us, to Arlington Cemetery, to all of the cemeteries where you see a cross or the Star of David in the military section. Thank God that those men and women gave us our freedom. We honor them today. We honor our Lord Jesus Christ because he gave to us our freedom. Let's stand at our feet this morning.